Hey everybody, I wanted to give my uh, final bit on the 32-bit uh, RAM, RAM conundrum. And uh, this it is going to be, uh, I'm going to try to keep it short because I have a Ustream uh, that I'll show the link to that uh, I broke down uh, Emix video um, point for point on, on things. But I wanted to give a quick summary in this video. First off, uh, none of this is meant to be an attack, nor do I want it to be used as an attack or anybody to use this as fuel. Uh, for an attack, all of this is, an, a, learning, is, is a learning experience, I think, uh, especially because this is a, a technical discussion. And to answer those quickly that PM me on why, why don't I pursue other uh, wind-hard arguments, is that I, my purpose on YouTube is to um, uh, come out and debate uh, technology. Uh, primarily when I witnessed Mac vs. BC first off, there wasn't a whole lot of technology going on. It was just a lot of opinions and there were, um, <clears throat> there, I mean, there were a lot of facts within that world, but nothing was really that terribly technical. The other reason is, is that there's not really any technically um, genre videos that attack OS X. So really I don't have that much material to go after in terms of that. So what is out there, I think there's a sufficient amount of Mac uh, YouTube users that um, take care of the bashing, the uh, switching, um, and a lot of the other um, type of material on there. So that's primarily why I'm sticking with the technical, because uh, as of late, Emic has given some videos uh, that are very, very technical. And many times, just reading an article, even reading it word for word, you don't, you can't, you won't even understand what you're reading, even though it's word for word, because you have to have the foundational techno technological context to get it, to get it right and seen between the lines. After all, it is a uh, biased article. That's number one. Anyway, I will have the link for the article, and in my description, and uh, th this goes into all the PMs that are, uh, were asking my opinion on this whole plagiarism thing with Emi. I'm just gonna state, I'm just gonna state this really quickly. I think it is a must that if you're using material from someone else that you should cite them. Uh, especially when I did my videos uh, like on um, Behind the Scenes of Leopard, I actually contacted every artist to get written permission to put uh, that their, their work as part of my video. So um, I think that giving credit where credit is due is a, a very big must. The other part of it is that a lot of this debating could have could have uh, really been resolved in one video had we even had the link. I mean, it, for me, it, as some constructive criticism to give, it would I would say it would have been far better to say, "Hey, I read this article. It it seems to me that Windows has a weakness here. What's your opinion? Here's the link in my video. Comment your opinion or, or make a response video." But we didn't get that. Basically, it took two vids just to get the actual source of what was going on to even start a debate. Anyway, to kind of cap what uh, I was uh, having the stream, um, basically what it comes down to is that uh, if we live in a 32-bit world, uh, MMIO is mapped on both operating systems. Both of them actually have it mapped on top. Apple Insider is not telling you that. What OS X is doing, though, uh, and, and this is this is where I'm going to give you the example of only 32 gigs uh, that are um, I'm sorry uh, four gigs that are available under 32 bit structure. Uh, basically, what they do is the chunk that is missing that is already mapped over your memory. What OS 10 essentially does in the end is it basically knows the amount that is being used and then it gives you that much amount back, but it's in virtual memory. So it's a slower form of memory. There's more swapping that's going on to do that. And the primary difference of that is, is that OS 10 is not a full 64-bit system and it is evolving to become a 64-bit system. The reason why Windows doesn't give, give you back the part, the part that has been mapped back in virtual memory is because their argument is saying if we have to go through that much complexity because what we have is already simpler by our 64-bit version. Windows can do that because they have a 64-bit version full through and through 100% and OS 10 is not so OS 10 has to evolve its consumer base to come along with a technological curve and thus you live in this hybrid situation and there's a lot of virtual memory swapping that's going on so it's not Apple Insider's not telling you that you're actually not getting the physical one-to-one -one off of your of your RAM either in OS 10 and uh, basically another recap is that the block of memory that the, the, the hardware and firmware takes in terms of uh, address space for whatever expansion card that you put in is actually being used. It's inc completely incorrect to say it's not used. What the article, the, what the article is missing to say in the context is, is that it's not available to the operating system. 
but that MMIO that is taking up the same block in OS X is also not available to your system. You actually have a, quite a lot of memory that can uh, exponentially grow and shrink within OS X that is untouchable. I mean, all, all of this memory, even blocks, aren't just for expansion cards. You have to have kernel space. You have to have driver buffers and caches and things like that that all get used. All of that stuff is also mapped on OS X. So you have all kinds of mapping. This is not just a Windows issue. The reason why it is observable in Windows versus OS X, again, is that Windows leaves it simplistic. It, it says, fine, we don't, need to, we don't need to bring it up into the software level. It's already faster at the hardware level where the chipset can already take care of the addressing for us. And whereas OS X has a latency issue if you bring it up into the software level just to go back down rather than leaving a hardware uh, to sort it out. Now, the, the argument that OS X is making is that they want to make sure that you always have a 4 gig addressable space. That doesn't mean you have a 4 gig physical one-to-one -to, -one to, your, to your physical RAM. They're virtualizing most of the things. This is why most people, and I explained on my stream, feel Leopard feels sluggish in comparison to Tiger. And this is because of the transition. You know, they're, they're, they've been doing a lot of work, and this is what why I think Snow Leopard should get paid a huge compliment and not have to worry about feature, feature, feature. They're actually doing a tremendous amount of work to bring Snow Leopard to be full 64-bit. There's a lot of work that's involved in that, so I think people should give credit to Snow Leopard because uh, I, I don't quite frankly think that they understand what's going on. Um, the other, so basically, like I said, the, uh, the big difference is, is that the chunk of memory that is missing in Windows is also missing in OS X. OS X simply says, we'll give it back to you, but we're going to give it back to you in virtual RAM. Windows says, if, if you need that much addressable space, buy our 64-bit version of Windows. That's what it comes down to. It doesn't mean Windows uh, actually sucks or uh, OS X is better in this regard. This is what I was meaning, that this is a, such a, a moot point. And uh, there are certainly Windows 32 operating systems that can support PA. The driver issues were related to their legacy, whereas Windows supports a hell of a lot older uh, incoming expansion cards than, than Apple does and, and, uh, and older drivers. And these things can't be registered at a, at a, at a higher level uh, of a memory block, and, and so they must re reside in the first four gigs. That's another area, er, error that the uh, Apple Insider had made in that they said, well, and the Santa Rosa chips, which is a Centrino mobile chip for the MacBooks and MacBook, uh, MacBook Pros, you can only put four gigs maximum in the MacBooks. So they said MMIO gets moved above the four gig barrier. That's not true. That is completely inaccurate. You can do that. You can do that if if you want to have a virtual space and things like that. But that's not really. You're not going. OS X not going to virtualize the actual mapping. They're just going to virtualize your tasks because that would actually give it even more of a performance loss if you were to virtualize that part of MMIO. You can also go to PAE, which also is not a, a really performance giver. It's it's more just to expand your addressable space. Um, so the PAE in a 32-bit world, even from from Windows, they, con they continually do con their argument will continue to come back and say, "Look, we have a 64-bit version already." They, after all, did beat Apple to uh, the consumer retail with 64-bit. Does that mean that there's not issues of 64-bit or whatever? No, I'm not saying that. I am saying that Windows did beat Apple with a 64-bit system to the consumer market because OS X is evolving to a 64-bit, okay? And so that's what Microsoft says. Look, we're not going to put all these complexities and band-aids in our system. We're not going to make it more complex when we already have a 64-bit version that you can buy. So they're not going to go all out of their way, certainly for a consumer retail level, to say, um, uh, here's PAE and all those other things. You can activate PAE, though. I mean, that's it, they're, I'm just for technical accurate, you can activate PA, but it is disabled. It's just you got to make sure that you have a, a hardware chipset and an incoming expansion architecture that can um, handle the addressable space in remapping. Okay, so that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, this is this is not an argument to say that one sucks over the other uh, at all. And um, uh, again, it's not completely Emic's fault. The Apple Insider article is not giving everybody all of the information and certainly not being truthful. Basically, if you're a Windows user on a 32-bit system, you are getting everything you are there because without addressing your video cards in that block, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to access anything of your expansion slots. So it is being used. What the article is not telling you is that they mean that it is not necessarily available uh, to be swapped in the OS. But the same thing 
happens in OS 10. There, that same block gets mapped in OS 10, but what they do is they just simply take that size that you're losing that's mapped and just give it back to you in virtual RAM. But chances are, at a 32-bit level, you're never going to even use that amount of virtual address space anyway. So um, I hope that explains a lot of it. Um, every, and and um, the last, I guess last but not least, people are asking, well, wh why is it the 4 gig? Pretty much uh, the, the, the 4 gigs is the maximum that 32-bit addre addresses. That's why you see the deficit. You don't see the deficit when you're, when you're less than 4 gigs, but the mapped memory I.O. still exists no matter how much memory that you have within your system. Anyway, thanks for watching.